What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Dylan Talks Tone. Today we are going to talk about electronics. So uh, a lot of times we spend, especially on this channel, we spend a lot of time talking about pickups because pickups is kind of what I do and that's like where I spend most of my brain time thinking about how uh, tone is made in an electric guitar and of course we also talk about setup, you know, those sorts of things. So between the pickups and then the mechanical action of the strings moving being the setup, those are two very important components, you know, to making your guitar tone good. The other thing is the electronics in the guitar. So there, a lot of people ask all the time, does it matter like what kind of wire, what kind of pots, what kind of switches, should I upgrade those things? So we're going to talk about a few kind of reasons why you might want to upgrade your things and then how to do that. We're gonna focus on a couple of things today. We're gonna to focus on the build quality of the stuff, does it matter, uh, on the physical side of it, but also on the tonal side of it, how much tone is in good pots and caps and switches and stuff. So uh, let's get into it. First of all, let's look at an inexpensive guitar and a couple of kind of common things that could be a thing when it comes to cheap pots and caps. Okay, so one of the only kind of real expensive pot guitars I have around here, expensive, inexpensive guitars with pots in it that I have around here is uh, this Affinity PJ bass that we just got in for a project. So when we look at this thing, um, when we talk about tone in components, one of the biggest things is pots. Now, it will work, right? So it's there, but here's what happens. And I've just got it plugged into the Positive Grid Spark Mini. This, we don't need huge amounts of tone for this demonstration. All we're really doing here is we're playing around with the pot taper. So when you strike a note uh, with the volume on 10, and you turn the knob down, it just like completely goes away right away. There's no, like, I mean, it just shuts off like a switch. Like, so that's one of the things with inexpensive pots that we've got to deal with. There's a couple other things, tolerance and build quality. So let's get this thing over to the bench. I'm actually gonna take the pots out of this guitar and we're gonna compare them to other pots uh, that I would much rather use in a guitar like this um, to upgrade it. And we're gonna talk about the differences and why you might wanna do that. We're also gonna look at the capacitors and the other components in the guitar as well. And we'll talk about the switches, which this one does not have. All right, so now that we've got the pick guard out of the guitar, these are in most guitars that come out of Asia. They are pretty well known. Um, it's not a big deal, but where it can affect the tone, where the pots can affect the tone is this. These are supposed to be 250K pots, okay? So this, and we're gonna get into build quality and wear and all that kind of stuff, but I wanna show you the tone side first. So if we measure this pot, we've got 225.4 ohms instead of 250. This one, we've got 257, and this one, we've got 251. So they're all three different values. Now the thing that is the tough part is as we've discussed in our other videos about tone and about pots, uh, the lower the resistance that we start with, the more frequencies we pull out of, uh, pull out of our tone, the more tone it sucks. So if you're gonna have tolerances on a pot that are not exact, okay? So we, it would be nice if they were within 10%. And these are barely within 10%, but this one's lower, this one's higher, and this one's right on. You never want lower. You always want it to be a little higher. Is it gonna be a little lower sometimes? Yes, but you, uh, if at all possible, you always want it to be a little higher. So, um, I don't like that. I would rather that be 255. 10% um, lower is a lot. That's a lot. And I personally don't like that, outside of the fact that I don't like the taper in these pots. Um, so if we were to compare that to what we wanna replace it with, 
I've got three CTS pots here. Okay, so these are pretty high quality pots. We carry these on our website at Dylan Talks Tone. And if we measure these, we've got 270, 264, and 265. So they're all a little bit over 250, which is normal, but they're all within a couple of ohms of each other, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, so the tolerance is way narrower between these three pots. Now on a bass where you've got two different kinds of pickups, that doesn't much matter. But on a guitar where you've got um, very identical pickups, you kind of want all these things to be as even as possible. Do they need to be matched? No, because you're reproducing different frequencies with different pickups. But you definitely don't want them to be below value because you're just sucking tone out of a passive guitar if you've got them below value. And if you measure a bunch of cheap pots, you're gonna find that they are all over the place. And honestly, this guitar being at 10% is the closest I've seen in a long time. So uh, these are definitely a good upgrade for your guitar. Now, let's also talk about build quality and longevity. Okay, first of all, we're gonna talk about build quality. So I sacrificed a good pot here to show you the difference between a good pot and a cheap pot on the inside. And I'm actually gonna get you some uh, macro shots of this as well. This is the cheap alpha pot. Now, one of the things I wanna show you in relation to this is if you look here, you'll see these little tiny fingers uh, that are, th there are three pieces it looks like there are three or four, uh, the little wipers that go onto the carbon plate. We'll talk about that in a minute. On this pot, we've got two big fat ones. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but when we've got the extra thickness and construction of the CTS pot here, this means that this is gonna be a much longer wearing pot because these little cont contacts here that make contact with uh, what I call the racetrack, the little carbon racetrack here, as it wipes back and forth, there's friction and it scratches on there. And these little things, I don't know if you ever remember when you were a little kid, but when I was a kid, we had slot car racing sets. And when those little fingers that looked more like this would wear out, you had to replace them. Well, that's exactly what happens in a pot. They start to get scratchy and it starts to go away. So I'll leave a little I'll, I'll show you a little um, macro shot of them side by side so you can see the difference. But basically, this is gonna wear out much more quickly than the higher quality CTS pot. Now, the other thing that is of note here is the actual quality of the carbon racetrack. Actually, let me get this one apart and I'll show you. All right, and again, I'll get some macro shots of this up close so that you can see them. But this right here uh, is this carbon, uh, I call it the carbon racetrack, but basically this is what the wiper wipes on as it comes around. The quality of this is what determines the taper of the pot. Also, you'll see that this is like printed onto this circuit board much thinner, okay? So it's very, very thin. Uh, you can actually, I'll be able to scratch it with the knife. And it, you know, this is just basically like a printed circuit board. This is actually a laminated piece that goes onto here. See there, how I can lift that up? That's actually a second piece that's a lot thicker. Um, and then what's interesting is the grounding ring on the inside is a separate piece where this one is a printed circuit board grounding ring as well. So those individual fingers have to maintain contact uh, much more finely and then they wear more and then there's not a lot of tolerance for them to wear once they start wearing and they go bad. This one is a spring piece and this one is a separate racetrack piece that actually goes on to the backing. So this is a much higher quality construction uh, than the cheaper pot. Uh, physical size, obviously not a huge deal. That doesn't much matter, but the taper of the pot determ is determined by this, the quality of the carbon also determines the amount of wear and the physical construction is completely different than a much cheaper pot over on this side. Also, you can notice that this has got lubrication and on the back side, there's this little bushing here that keeps it spinning nice and smooth for a long period of time. 
That might not seem like a big deal, but it also aids in keeping debris out of the pot, which dust is what gives you a scratchy pot. So that's why these CTS pots also last a lot longer as well, instead of having the type of construction that this pot has. Pretty interesting stuff. So uh, the CTS pot is much, much better uh, for not actually that much money. Like I said, we have these on the website at Dylan Talks Tone now, um, and you can check them out. Uh, the other thing, as far as the construction is concerned, is we have a uh, quarter inch spline versus a seven millimeter import spline um, on the import ones that will, this will open you up to a lot more choices in knobs and stuff. Uh, and this is a brass one versus this is just like a cast pot metal deal. So a lot higher quality. Is this all tone related? This part absolutely is. And then when we talk about longevity, absolutely tone because it won't fail. Okay, now let's talk about capacitors. Uh, if you followed this channel for any amount of time, you know uh, that something that kind of gets under my skin is people that make people pay way too much for capacitors. All a capacitor is is a passive filter, right? So uh, while some people believe that the type of capacitor makes a huge difference in the tone on an electric guitar, others may think that it does not. Um, I'm in the camp that a good orange drop, and we're gonna get to get we're gonna get to what a good orange drop is here in a minute. Uh, I'm in the camp that a good orange drop is as good as anything. Now that being said, on our website we do carry uh, a uh, oil-filled capacitor, this dude right here uh, by Central Lab, and we carry these on the website as well because some people really do like oil-filled capacitors, and they also like the aesthetic of them because if you're trying to do like a vintage inspired build or a vintage inspired upgrade, then this would be the thing that you would want. Just even if it was nothing else than aesthetics, which I totally get, I would want it to look legit too. So we also carry the oil filled capacitors as well. But let's talk about what really matters on a cheap capacitor versus a good capacitor and why you don't really have to spend $28 for some boutique capacitor. I'll get you an up close view of this uh, B-roll, but uh, on each capacitor, we've got the voltage reading, we've got the brand. These are, we carry Sprague orange drops, the real deal. And we also carry the Central Lab uh, oil filled ones. But as far as the orange drop ones go, uh, not all orange drop capacitors are created equal. You could go on to your big, you know, you could go onto Amazon or you could go on somewhere and you could get an orange capacitor and put it in your guitar. But is it the same as something like this? And in a cheap guitar, is it the same? And what improvements are you making? First of all, obviously the pot taper, but then when we start to talk about the capacitor itself, there's one very important number besides the value on here that we wanna look at. So we've got the voltage, that doesn't matter. We're only talking about millivolts here. So, you know, we're only talking about 500 millivolts. So this is a 200 volt capacitor, it doesn't matter. It could be a 10 volt capacitor and it wouldn't matter, okay? So the physical size, people will speak down uh, or speak poorly of the little chiclet capacitors because they're so small. That doesn't matter. Physical size doesn't matter. What really matters is when we look at the end of the value of the capacitor, and I'll give you a macro shot of this. See the J on the end? That is the tolerance of the capacitor. And J is 5%. Now it goes in the alphabet. So K is gonna be 10%, L is gonna be uh, 15%, M is gonna be 20%, I think and N is gonna be 30%, so it's non-linear. I had to look, because I couldn't remember. All I care is that the capacitors that we stock are J or lower, so that they are 5% tolerance. If you get up into an L or an M or an N capacitor, and you'll, you'll see these, um, like on Amazon and stuff, you can get those like variety kits, they're higher tolerance, uh, which basically means that on a .015, 30%, you could lose a third of what your tone circuit is supposed to do on your guitar. That could affect your tone a lot. So uh, that's, a, that's a huge deal. So we like to make sure that we have 5% or 
lower in the alphabet, so J or lower. So if you're shopping not at Dylan Talks Tone and you're shopping somewhere else, make sure that you get that tolerance J or lower in the alphabet so that you get a good capacitor. Now, of course, you could go completely the opposite direction and you could spend $28, $30 for some boutique oil-filled capacitor. Does it really matter? When it comes to that, we have other videos on this and if you'd like me to dive into that more uh, deeply, we could get super nerdy on the uh, how a capacitor works and why it doesn't really matter. You don't really need to worry about spending that much money on a capacitor. Uh, I don't remember how much ours are on the website, $4 or $5 or something, and way within tolerance, great tone, an excellent upgrade for any inexpensive guitar or something that has failed and you're trying to, you know, bring it back. A lot of older guitars with oil-filled capacitors, uh, they start to drift over time, and so having something like an orange drop will keep it a lot more stable. Okay, let's talk about switches and jacks. Switches and jacks are really more about a, a reliability thing, right? So we've seen those box style switches that come in a lot of inexpensive guitars. I don't have one here right now to show you, so we'll just throw a picture of one up here. You know what I'm talking about. Those, those, they're little boxes. They come in a lot of like, uh, less expensive import guitars, and you know they wear out. We've heard them, they get scratchy, they get crackly, right? So the ones we stock on the website are the Oak Grigsby uh, Electro Switches. These are the ones that Fender uh, American Guitars use, the Fender Custom Shops uses these. These are fantastic switches. Um, and then we use Switchcraft switches for the Gibson style stuff. Um, it's just, they're just names that have been known forever, right? They're names that have been known forever in the land of electric guitar stuff. When it comes to jacks, jacks are very simple. So we've got our Switchcraft and we actually carry the Pure Tone stuff. Does it matter necessarily about uh, tone, Pure Tone? No, not really. Um, people could get super nerdy about that, but honestly, it just holds on to the plug. It's fantastic. Some people don't like them because they really grip the plug. Uh, the first few times you use them, you kind of have to, you know, wear them in a few times and then they, they work perfectly, but they really do grab the plug. So if you don't like that, get a Switchcraft instead. Uh, but we do carry both uh, in many of our kits on the website. This is something that uh, I really believe in. We use these on all of our pre-wire kits for our loaded strap pick guards, a lot of our Telecasters, uh, our loaded wiring stuff, and on the Les Paul and SG loose parts kits, you can option these as well. So there's a bunch of stuff that you can get there. I know that a lot of folks would tune into a video like this and everybody wants to talk about tone. They want to get all hung up on, yeah, but can I hear it if I just like close my, I don't care about that. Um, you know, there's, there's certain things that when it comes to playing guitar, uh, we just need them to be there. We need them to work. Now, obviously tone matters, right? But here's the thing with a passive guitar. Anything we put in the guitar is gonna kind of take away from the potential of the signal of the guitar. So uh, when we add pots, when we add caps, when we add anything on a passive instrument, it kind of takes away from that. We wanna make sure that we take away from that the least amount possible. So making sure that our pots are within tolerance, making sure that our taper is good, and making sure that our caps are within tolerance are probably the most important things to the actual tone. Now. The rest of this really has to do with reliability. I am a firm believer that if you don't like the color of your guitar, if you don't like uh, how the guitar feels, if you don't like how the finish feels, and most importantly, if you don't have confidence in your instrument, if you're worried that the pots are gonna be scratchy or that the switch is gonna cut out or that you're gonna have some kind of reliability issue with the guitar, you are not gonna play as well. If you're not comfortable on your instrument and have confidence in your instrument, you're not gonna play as well because you're gonna be worried about it. Uh, if you don't like how it feels or looks or it, you know any of that kind of stuff. So people might disagree with me on this, but this kind of thing is really important to tone in my opinion because if you're not playing well, you're not playing well. End of story. This is why uh, we have added an entire section for electronics upgrades to Dylan Talks Tone. I, uh, we used to do this. We used to 
carry all kinds of parts, but for those of you that have followed the channel for a long time, you know that we lived in a motorhome for a couple of years and I could not stock those parts. So we, we just kind of got away from it. But now we're in our new digs, we've got some space and we've got the manpower and the infrastructure back in place and we are able to carry a bunch of stuff for you. So running quickly through what we have on the website, we have orange drop capacitors, we have central lab oil filled capacitors. We have electro switch by Oak Grigsby switches for our fender style stuff. We have switchcraft switches for our Gibson style stuff. We have pure tone jacks. We have switchcraft jacks. We have wire that you can get. So we get a really good Gavit style cloth pre tinned wire. That's pretty stinking awesome. We have the braided wire if you want it. We have loose parts kits for strats Tellies, Les Pauls, SGs, and a couple other things in there. So if you want to upgrade an entire guitar, so let's say you order pickups from us, you can just click a button and get all the other parts straight into the box and straight out to you and you can completely do it uh, upgraded. You don't have to pay shipping from two different places. We're trying to centralize this stuff for you so you have a one-stop shop on all this stuff. Uh, you can check out the section on the website. Uh, this is something that I'm very passionate about. I feel it's really important to make this available to you. I want you to have a higher quality experience when you come to Dylan Talks Tone and get everything in one place. Uh, even if you don't order pickups, if you do want to order some loose parts from us, you are welcome to do that. We do have a minimum shipping though. It's like $8.95. So just take that into account, order a couple of things to make it worth your while. I just want to be honest and transparent about that. But uh, it's something I'm super stoked about. It's available on the website now. And if you have any questions about it, you can hit us up in the chat down there at the bottom that you'll see uh, on the website and we will get you the right stuff. Uh, pots, caps, switches, jacks, wiring, any of that kind of stuff. And I hope you dig it very much. The links will be in the description. Thanks for hanging out and we will see you tomorrow for the podcast.